Hello, everybody. Welcome um, to our fall 2021 um, Doctor of Chiropractor Preview Day. We're so excited to have you. There's quite a few of you here in our webinar. Um, we may have a few more tick in, but I wanted to go ahead and get started so that we start on time. Um, we have quite a few presenters for, scheduled today to provide some information about our Doctor of Chiropractic program, and we're so excited that you're here. Um, after each presenter, we will save a few minutes for questions. If you'd like to ask questions, you can post it with your name or anonymously in the Q&A chat at the bottom of your Zoom screen, and we'll answer as many as we can after each presentation, and the rest we'll answer via email to everyone who's RSVP'd. So if for some reason we don't get to your question today, we will um, get to it um, early Monday, we'll try to email you. To start us off, I'd like to present to all of you the Dean of the College of, Di the Dean of, the College of Chiropractic, Dr. Kathleen Galligan. So Dr. Galligan. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome. We are thrilled to have you here. Uh, I'd like to congratulate you on making such an excellent choice in your interest in the chiropractic profession. I've been in this job now for uh, several years, but prior to that, I practiced for almost 40 years and feel that I can unequivocally state that this is an absolutely fabulous profession. Um, when I was leaving my practice, we had a kind of an open house for, for patients and I was about to leave. I was in the parking lot walking to my car and this, this big uh, four-wheel truck came squealing into the parking lot and a guy jumped out. He was a patient of mine. He was a contractor. He'd been clearly been on site. I hadn't seen him for four or five years, but he had raced over to make sure he caught me because he wanted to let me know how much impact I had had on the quality of his life. So he went out of his way on a busy day to catch me before I left my practice. And his point was that not only I'd helped him with his aches and pains and his low back pain, but that over time, that because I took an interest in him as a person and listened, and he learned all kinds of things about diet and exercise and managing his stress. And he just felt like I had had a huge impact on his ability and his qual uh, to manage life and his quality of life. And that's a very humbling experience to hear that. It makes you feel really good and it's a huge responsibility. But when you practice as a chiropractor, you have the capacity to have this kind of impact and there's just nothing like it. I think also I should congratulate you on picking your, uh, having an interest in this program because in this program we have core values that, that include curiosity which you certainly need to really pay attention and listen to your patients. We value whole person health, which means that you view every patient as more than just a spine walking in the door and you understand that there's, there's a lot of complexities in their life. They're all very different. We value inclusiveness so that you learn how to listen and hear what their life is like, what their culture is like, and make sure that you're giving them advice that fits into who they are. And these are all the things that help you become a great chiropractic physician. We also have the core value here of student focus. During the pandemic, we've been very, very challenged with all the changes that we've had to make. I think the faculty probably have gotten dizzy because of the number of pivots that we've had to make in order to accommodate uh, the students and bring them the educational experience. But I'd like to tell you that we have an absolutely fabulous faculty. And even though it was very difficult on them to make some of these changes, changes they'd never had to make before, changes they had to make quickly, they never lost sight of their focus on the quality of the experience for the student. I did ask them to pay attention to changes that we made and the impact that those seem to be having on the quality of the education. And we actually found that some of the things that we were forced to do during the pandemic really improved the outcomes for the students. We got feedback from students that changes that we made such as uh, presenting modules, self-learning self -learning modules to students prior to some of our labs that they could do in their own time and come to a, a patient skill-based lab prepared really enhanced the quality of the lab. And so we've made some, some of those kinds of changes because that was clearly better for the students. So despite the difficulties of the pandemic, I think you'll find that we've made some changes that really enhance your education here. They'll challenge you. This is a rigorous program but it should be because you are going to be a chiropractic physician. Um, but it will allow you to learn the knowledge you need to know, to know, learn how to apply that knowledge, which is what you need to do to take care of your patients. Uh, you, it's very exciting because in fall 2022, we'll be able to finally have a Q1 cohort of students on campus. And I just can't tell you how excited everybody is about that. We haven't had a full cohort of students from Q1 in the building yet. 
And so we're, we, that, again, that's very exciting to us. And we would love to see you there. We're here to help you. And uh, you've got a lot of really good people to hear from today. And so enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Galligan. We really appreciate your thoughts. Um, next, we are going to hear from Beth, um, Dr. Beth Dominics. She will be speaking to us about the chiropractic sciences and adjusting classes at UWS. Dr. Dominicus graduated from Southern California University of Health Sciences in 1994 and practiced in Southern California until 2015. Her private practice specialized in diversified chiropractic, nutrition, and exercise. She also worked in a multidisciplinary setting alongside orthopedics and neurologists. So without further ado, welcome Dr. Dominicus. Hello everyone. As Dr. Galligan mentioned, you made a great choice thinking about chiropractic for your profession. Uh, you might know chiropractors are described as primary care providers by the Council on Chiropractic Education. And as a portal of entry doctor, the chiropractic physician is licensed to diagnose and treat ailments without drugs and surgery. Our scope of practice differs from country to providence to state, and we will prepare you for wherever it is that you do want to practice. In all cases, we are neuromusculoskeletal specialists. So we manage our patients or we co-treat our patients or we refer them out when the condition is not within our scope of practice. The chiropractic manipulative therapy is our special tool. I'm going to say it's our superpower because that is what really makes us different in the field of manual medicine and helping our patients. At UWS, the chiropractic sciences department will train you to diagnose your patients, manage them through many classes like, I'm just going to give you a list of classes, and this is just a quick little list. There are a lot more, and it's starting from when you first walk onto campus, the first classes, and then moving up through the more advanced classes. So for instance, we have spinal biomechanics, and we have a surface anatomy. We have, which the, the spinal bi biomechanics that sort of explains what it is, it's learning how the joints work. Um, surface anatomy is learn, it goes along with your anatomy course where you're working to learn all the different muscles, bones, joints, just everything about the body. You move into quarter two with a spinal assessment course. The spinal assessment course is focused on neuromusculoskeletal assessment so that you can, if you've been adjusted by a chiropractor or manipulated before, you know that the adjustment, first you need to find what we call a listing, but you need to find a place that's not moving well. You need to find out what the dysfunction is. So you start to learn that right from the beginning. We also have courses where we focus on how to use your body to deliver the best adjustment possible. Um, you will learn thoracic adjusting. You will learn x-ray positioning. You will learn pelvis adjusting. You will have a physical rehabilitation class. You'll have a soft tissue class, lumbar spine adjusting, orthopedic and neurologic assessment courses, cervical spine adjusting, extremity adjusting, advanced rehab. As you move up and you get up into the quarters eight, nine, and 10, you have some advanced procedures. You also start your clinical experience, which you'll hear a little bit more about later in the presentation. That's it. Wonderful, thank you so much, Dr. Dominicus. Um, at this time, we'd love to open the floor for any participants who have questions for Dr. Dominicus. So I'm gonna give you a second to write in that Q&A chat, but to kind of start us off, I have a couple questions for you. Um, so first, um, what kind of adjustments are taught at UWS? What are, our, what are our students learning? Did you say what kind of adjustments? What types of adjustments? Yeah, what, what different what type? types, yeah. Is, uh, Generally, I would call it diversified chiropractic adjusting, where we take a little bit from different techniques and put them together for an overall education in adjusting full spine and extremities. We don't focus on special, um, specialized named proprietary types of techniques. We do not do that. But you will have opportunities to learn a little bit about those techniques, though we don't teach them directly. So I would call it diversified 
Awesome. Thank you so much. Another question I have for you. Oh, before I do mine, we actually just got one from a participant. They asked, how much of the first few years are virtual? Does UWS have a cadaver lab to teach anatomy? I believe you're going to listen to somebody from the basic science department today, mm -hmm. and they'll give you more information on that. All of your hands-on classes they are here on campus. So you will be on campus. Uh, the courses in the course, you can, I really wanted to be on campus today so you could see what one of our adjusting rooms looks like. You can see there's a number of uh, chiropractic tables in here. In the course, you'll be rotating among different people in your class so that you'll get to learn about all different body types. And it's hands-on from quarter one up. There are some online courses. Those are typically lecture type of courses. Wonderful. And like Dr. Galgan mentioned at the beginning, starting in fall 2022, all of our students will be on campus. So that's going to be really exciting. And then to answer the cadaver question, we do not have um, a cadaver lab on our brand new campus. And the big reason for that is because there has to be a different HVAC just for the cadaver lab than for the rest of the school. And our brand new campus just opened a year ago. And we decided to, um, instead of having two totally separate HVACs, to bring in Sindavers. I don't know if anybody in the audience has worked with Sindavers before, but they are almost like the real deal. Um, if you are dying to see a real cadavers, but bad words there, <laughs> um, you are welcome to visit our old campus, which is now used by a nursing school if you do want to look at a real life cadaver. But the Sindavers are very, very similar to real bodies. Um, I will never touch one, freak me out personally, but our students and our staff assure me that um, it's, it's very uh, similar to looking at a real cadaver, but that way we don't have to worry about that HVAC system. So that's kind of your answer for you, Miss um, Emily. I've heard your question. Thank you so much. I have one more question for you, Dr. Dominicus. Um, why did you decide to become a chiropractor? I chose to be a chiropractor. It's, it's actually kind of a, a funny story. I was in a different profession and I knew, I, you know, I had family and friends that went to chiropractors. So I was aware of it from a, a young age and I was working in a different profession. And then I went into just teaching. I was teaching in public school, but after I taught all day, for me, it was relaxing to go and work back office in a chiropractic office. So when I first started teaching in my twenties, I went and after teaching all day, you know, went and did uh, physical therapy and modalities and different things like that with the patients. And I just discovered how amazing the field is. And I discovered how you can really help a person. Um, and it's the, the patients are so grateful as Dr. Galligan mentioned, just, it was just such a great experience that I decided, okay, back to school. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And then I have one more question from Dr. Galligan. I see your hand raised. Yeah, sorry. I don't have a question. I have a comment. Um, we do you still lease our full state-of-the-art anatomy lab or what, what was ours on our old campus. And we actually have classes starting in the, the um, spring. Actually, this year we'll start, but certainly in the fall of 2022, you will have anatomy class in those labs, um, you'll be evaluating or in, uh, taking a look at uh, ca uh, cadavers that have been prosected. We no longer have dissection, but we have, you will be in the lab with prosected uh, bodies. We also do have the two cadavers. We have a wide variety of models. We have obviously books. We have some interactive um, artificial, you know, AI types of ways to learn anatomy. Research shows that the best way to learn anatomy potentially is to look at it from a, you know, a lot of different angles with a lot of different styles of teaching. And so we have that available to you, but we do have uh, cadavers in the lab that you will be working with, although the, the dissection itself will have been done by the anatomy faculty. Wonderful. Thank you so much for expanding on that. I appreciate it. It looks like we've answered all the questions. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Dominicus, for being here. We appreciate you. Um, Alrighty. So before we move on to our next speaker, I have a few poll questions for you. So if you look at your screen, we're going to pop up a couple of questions just to kind of get to know each other a little bit. Um, so take just a second. Tell us kind of where you're from and how you found us. We'd love to hear from you. All right, you guys, just a few more seconds to go ahead and answer those poll questions. All 
Alrighty, we're gonna go ahead and close those. So make sure you vote soon. And here's our results. All right, so a few of you in the Northeast, handful in the Midwest, Mountain West, the West, Northeast, handful of you from Canada, welcome. We're so excited to have you. Um, Awesome. You guys are so awesome for sharing that. Um, thanks so much. And then a little bit about how you heard about us. Appreciate you guys letting us know. <laughs> All right. So next, to help you learn a little bit more about our program, Dr. Catherine Ross will be speaking to us about the clinical experience at UWS. Dr. Ross is a chiropractic physician at the University of Western States Health Center. She graduated from Western States Chiropractic College in 2009. Like many who land in the Pacific Northwest, she stayed and practiced in an integrative health clinic with naturopathic physicians, acupuncturists, and massage therapists in Northeast Portland until she started working at UWS in 2016. Her chiropractic interests include prenatal, postpartum, and pediatric care, as well as sports injuries and rehabilitation. So without further ado, welcome Dr. Ross. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Preview Day. I'm going to be sharing a little PowerPoint with you today. Um, first of all, while I load this up, I just want to say congratulations for um, just exploring the healthcare uh, field. It's just such an exciting time to be in healthcare right now, and the way that we can impact patients is just so meaningful. So I want to tell you a little bit about our clinic. Um, as as our students are getting to you know, become interns, we really, really like to push um, them to really focus on patient care. And it's always for the good of the patient. You know, we um, are always using evidence-based and a multidisciplinary approach. Okay? And we really try to prepare our graduates to provide conservative whole person integrated healthcare in the best way possible for our patients. So, when do you actually become engaged in the clinic? So right off the bat in your first quarter, you can receive complimentary care in our clinic. This is such an amazing way for you to experience the type of services that we provide our patients. Um, you also have on-site radiology services available, um, lab work. You can even get your own um, free pair of orthotics. Actually, you get two free pairs every two years. And we also provide nutritional support and rehab rehabilitation for our patients. I think the best part about getting into the clinic early is that you get to know your clinician really well and your intern and your intern will be an upper quarter student. And so you can then ask them questions. They'll give you information. You know, I've watched so many interns share notes with their um, students and just help them um, as they go along through the program. So that mentorship opportunity is just wonderful. So as you're working your way up, um, like Dr. Dominicus said, you know, there are many courses that help to prepare you for becoming a great doc. So you learn history taking exams, diagnosis, adjusting, you know, you even have courses on how to use our electronic health record system. There's billing and coding courses. And then we have a special series called clinic phase that it's designed to allow you to practice your skills so that you're ready for the clinic. So you get to work with simulated patients. Now your clinical internship starts in quarter eight. Um, in internship, we have eight practicing clinicians um, working on separate shifts and we provide care to the public, um, to students, staff, families. Um, we accept pretty much every major medical insurance. So we are allowed, you know, we're able to see a wide array of patients that way. Um, the type of patients that we see in the clinic, you know, we see a little bit of everything. So I love to see youth athletes, um, pregnant patients, you know, we see elderly, we see just everyday people who need chiropractic care. So the type of treatments that we typically provide, you know, we do adjusting, spinal adjusting, extremity adjusting, you know, we do that manual diversified technique, but we also can use low force techniques as well. Um, we provide soft tissue care to our patients that includes cupping, massage, you know, instrument assisted work. We really try to provide the most evidence-based care that we can for our patients. So we even have things like class four and cold laser. We use flexion distraction therapy, a wide array of PT modalities. Um, and we really like to get our patients active and moving again. So using rehabilitation plans and um, get them strong and strengthened up so they don't get injured in the future. 
So once you get to quarter 10, you know, you have the opportunity to go out and work with docs in the field. So we have clinical based internships. So you get to work with the DC in the Portland, Vancouver metro area. And that would be for all of your Q10 and Q11 pretty much. There are other opportunities as well called community based rotations where you have one to two shifts a week where you go and work with underserved communities. So like Cascadia Behavioral Health, the Paul Treatment Center, Volunteers of America. Um, and that's a great way to provide care to underserved communities and to gain experience. Once you get to quarter 12, you have the opportunity to go on a preceptorship. Most of our students um, love to do this because then they can go work with maybe a doc that they grew up um, working with, and maybe this is the doc they want to be with in the future. So preceptorship can take place um, just about anywhere in the US, um, as well as in Canada. The other interesting thing that we offer in quarters 11 and 12 is through the Department of Veteran Affairs, we have clerkship opportunities. Um, the VA has locations again all over the US, um, Vegas, Ohio, you know, Seattle, so many different opportunities for our interns to go get experience in that realm as well. So here's a little quick tour of our clinic. This is our reception area and a treatment room. Here's our fitness center. And we also have a very large rehab um, room that's attached to this as well. And our lab, so we can do blood draws on our patients. All right, well, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I look forward to seeing you in the halls of the clinic. If you have any questions beyond this, please shoot me an email, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you so much, Dr. Ross. We super appreciate it. And I love those pictures of the clinic. That's so helpful. Um, so again, we're going to open the floor for Q&A. Feel free to ask any questions you have of Dr. Ross. I'm going to get us started and ask, when do our students at UWS begin their clinic rotations? They begin clinic in quarter eight. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, what are kind of the most common treatment modalities offered in the clinic? And what are some of the most common symptoms that we see in our patients on campus? Sure. So treatment modalities, adjusting, you know, massage, uh, laser therapy has been a really popular one recently that we've had great results with, you know, electro modalities and just um, physical like rehabilitation. Um, common conditions. I mean, we'll see anything from neck pain to low back pain, sciatica. Um, I recently worked with a swimmer who had a really terrible forearm strain and got him back in the pool so he could uh, finish out his water polo tournament. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. No, thank you so much. Um, if anyone has questions, go ahead and post them. I'm going to keep asking Dr. Ross a couple of questions. The last one I, I have pre-prepared for you, I guess, is why did you decide to become a chiropractor? We heard from Dr. Dominicus, but I'd love to hear kind of from you why you decided. Sure. Yeah. I um, decided to follow this profession because as a athlete growing up, I was a gymnast. So lots and lots of injuries. And I saw a wide array of medical providers. And honestly, seeing a chiropractor was the best thing I could have done for myself. Um, just having the scope and, you know, not having to take medication for it, but actually like looking at the whole person really helped resolve a lot of my conditions a lot more quickly. Thank you. We do have a couple of questions from our, pan, um, our audience members. So the first one is, do you need health insurance to use the clinic as a student? No, you do not. So as a student, you get complimentary. So you get free chiropractic care. You also get complimentary x-rays as well. Fantastic. Um, our next question is for the VA portion of quarter 10 and 11. Are you able to go anywhere there is a military base or does it need to be in a specific location? There, it has to be in a specific location that has um, DCs already there that have chosen to take on students for the clerkship program. Mm -hmm. And that, but that program just keeps growing. I mean, we're adding docs, it seems like every year, like at least a few of them. So it's pretty great. Awesome. Thank you. And then a couple other questions. Um, this person asked two about the preceptorship. The first is, do we need to find our own preceptorship? No. Um, so I work with a lot of my interns. If they don't have one in mind, I, you know, have a wide array of docs like locally that I can recommend them to go. We also have a list um, that our clinic internship administration has that, you know, interns can look at and then they can reach out to the docs themselves as well. Great. And the other part of the question is, are we strictly doing our preceptorship during Q12 only? Preceptorship takes place in Q12. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Great questions. Um, do we have any other last minute questions before we move on to our next portion? 
We do. Okay, perfect. This person asks, who within the in, within the public has access to the clinic? Does UWS offer free or community-based services to low-income or marginalized communities? Great so question. we're actually working on getting a few of those programs set up again, but right now we offer reduced um, fees for low income folks, um, but we're our clinic is open to the public um, we welcome anybody to come in, we do have affiliations with some of the local high schools, so those high school students can come in and get um, complimentary care right now. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, it looks like we're all caught up on questions for now. So thank you again so much, Dr. Ross, for um, sharing with us. We really appreciate you being here. No problem. Um, all right, so next, we've actually asked current Doctor of Chiropractor students and a few UWS alumni to join us for a discussion panel. Our panel will include the following folks. We will have Dr. Ali Masumi, Dr. Becca Bell, Dr. Jaime Medina, Lauren Fauchin, and Sean Bryant. So if each of you wouldn't mind putting on your um, your camera and you're unmuting yourself and just take a second to just introduce yourself. Um, what, tell us where you're from, provide a bit about yourself. Let's start with Dr. Masumi, if I can call on you first. Yeah, um, so my name is Ali Masumi. I was a graduate in 2010 from the doctorate degree at Western States, practiced for a few years, came back and did my master's degree in sports medicine. And uh, after that one was over, I did my uh, fellowship. Well, I am currently finishing my fellowship at. Um, uh, for sports medicine in Canada. Ours is four year program after the uh, DC program. So it's a long one, but it's almost done. And I practice in Vancouver. I owe a sports medicine clinic in uh, Vancouver. It's called Kinematics. And uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Thanks, Dr. Masumi. The next person um, on my screen, so we'll just go in that order, is Dr. Bell. Can I pick on you next? Yeah, of course. Hi, guys. My name is Rebecca Bell. I'm a University of Western States graduate. I've been in practice for about three years now, and I'm practicing at a clinic in Portland called Element Wellness and Sports Rehabilitation. Um, I'm also the team chiropractic physician for the NWSL Portland Thorns and the MLS, one of the team chiropractors for the MLS Portland Timbers. Very cool. And I, I did the Masters of Sports Medicine at, at University of Western States as well. Oh, very cool. Thanks so much. Um, next is Dr. Medina. Hi, uh, well, I'm Dr. Medina. I graduated in uh, 2018. Um, first uh, job out of the out of the out of the school. I worked with a low income community in Eastern Washington, so I saw a lot of farm workers. I worked with uh, people uh, picking fruit, uh, dairies, and all that. So that was a really good opportunity. I am currently practicing in a place called Boone's Ferry Chiropractic and Massage in Wilsonville, Oregon. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I've been up to. Yeah. Thanks so much. Um, Lauren, can you introduce yourself next? Yeah, hi, um, I'm Lauren Foshan. Um, I'm from Canada, I'm from Kelowna, British Columbia. I'm a current Q9 student um, and I'm also doing the master's in sports medicine concurrently with the DC degree right now. Fantastic, so popular. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that master's degree later for anybody who's curious. And then lastly, um, Sean, can you introduce yourself to our, to our, um, to our attendees? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my name is Sean Bryant. Uh, like you guys have, have said, uh, I'm also uh, a quarter nine student, just like Lauren, uh, only in the, the DC program currently, but I'm originally from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, uh, also in Canada, for those that don't know. Um, I'm also one of the representatives for the Motion Palpation Institute Club that's on campus. So in the Portland chapter for the school. And yeah, that's that's about it. Awesome. Thank you all so much for introducing yourselves. Um, now for the next little while, we're actually just going to have a Q&A session. So feel free to ask questions. I'm going to kind of get the ball rolling. Um, and hopefully that'll kind of help some of you listening think of new questions to pick brains for our current students and our alumni. So um, my first question to whoever wants to kind of start us off is, why did you decide to enroll in the UWS DC program? There's a lot of great DC schools out there, but what kind of, what made you choose us? Love to hear from you. I can so start with that one. <laughs> I, uh, I lived in Portland, so the location was awesome. I knew I wanted to stay here because I absolutely love Portland. Um, and that was really appealing to me. But I also had been shadowing somebody that attended the school, and she seemed to have a really similar mindset to me as far as the evidence-based perspective went. And that's what drew me initially to the University of Western States, was knowing that it was a really evidence-based curriculum.
Yeah, to piggyback off that, the evidence-based uh, was kind of one of my big draws. Obviously, I'm from Canada, so I thought about going to the Canadian school. Um, but I really liked that UWS made me feel like I was part of the family here. Um, they really tried and made an effort to make me feel included and like I was not just a number to them and that I mattered um, in this school. I can add to that. It's um, yeah, evidence-based school for sure. That's a big part, but also was very close to Vancouver. So um, I had a lot of family and friends here. I didn't want to be too far away. And I would sometimes actually drive back home over a weekend if it was a friend's birthday party or something like that. But uh, for me, it was either CMCC or Western States. Um, uh, so yeah, and it was close to Vancouver. So that was my reason. Also, it's a, obviously it's a great school. I mean, there's a lot of crappy schools out there, so. <laughs> Um, what, what happened uh, with me is uh, I'm from Southern California, Los Angeles. So I had my pick of schools down there. We had Palmer life. Uh, there was one right 30 minutes away from where I lived. Um, but the, uh, the whole idea is, yeah, once the evidence, evidence base was great. The other two that drew me is because I wanted to go to a, a, a high quality school. And so that uh, I looked at the testing scores and everything that the school had accomplished. And I said, you know what, if the, they, they have the highest testing scores in the country, then you know what, the, the quality of education was, must be top notch. And I said, you know what, that's great, let's, let's do that. On top of that, uh, Oregon, the Pacific Northwest is gorgeous. I always wanted to experience that. So I said, yeah, all right, let's do it, uh, two for two. Wonderful, anybody else wanna share or shall we move on to another question? Um, just really quickly from the panel um, or from our questions, um, one of our um, attendees wanted me to mention that um, she wants to comment on the prominence of female chiropractors on the presentation today. She says it's impressive. This program seems very inclusive and I am hardly ever exposed to female chiropractors. So um, thank you all again for being here and thank you so much. Um, for your comment. We're actually going to be talking a little bit more about diversity and inclusion and trying to include everybody a little bit later on in our presentation. So thank you for kind of foreshadowing that for us in that comment. Alrighty, so my next question for some of you guys is what has been or what was um, your favorite course in the DC program? Ooh, uh, I'll, I'll take the rain on that one. So my favorite was uh, you know, we got a lot of adjustments and everything, uh, but the, my favorite was the Cadaver Lab, actually. Uh, but this was a, a program that was, I don't know if it's still within the UWS coursework or, or not, but I really enjoyed that so much that I became a tutor in, in, that, in that aspect as well. It was, a, it was a really good opportunity for me to get to know the, the human body intimately. And it, it was great. It, I still have fond, fond memories of that. a really big toss-up for me. I liked all the adjusting classes a lot. <laughs> Those are some of my favorites. I mean, it's so hard to pick just one. <laughs> Fair enough. It is a great curriculum. <laughs> kind of going in the, uh, the opposite direction. I, I obviously had thought of uh, Dr. Bill Gorman and teaching uh, gross anatomy as an incredible instructor in an incredible class, but uh, Nothing really compares to getting thrown into uh, spinal disorders. As soon as you get into your, your sixth quarter, you get introduced to the legendary Dr. Ron LaFay and you get put on the hot spot. And that's really when rubber meets the road and you kind of start to feel like you're uh, becoming a chiropractor essentially. So that's where you kind of learn the majority of the conditions that you're gonna be seeing and how to treat and where to go from there. So that's my favorite. Yeah, one of my favorites has been all the rehab classes. Uh, Dr. Strange kind of spearheads those and he does a really good job of uh, integrating how to go from, you know, getting a patient out of acute care and moving them into more rehabbing into uh, function and focusing on function in the patient care. Wonderful. And Lauren, I, we actually have a question for you specifically. It says, what is your clinical experience like as a student and do you see complex patients? Yeah, so I just started clinic uh, last quarter, so I'm in Q9. Um, I'm currently working uh, with Dr. Bill Moreau, um, under, treating under him. Um, and so as a student, you do see complex patients. You do get a lot of outpatients coming in, um, and you see things that you never thought you would see. Um, people with, you know, um, CNS disorders or... Um, yeah, like just different complex things that you never thought you'd see. We have concussions, we treat 
you know, broken bones, we have those walk into our clinic and you have to assess those and figure out that you need to x-ray them and do that kind of stuff. So there is a wide variety, everything from students that have some postural issues or syndromes to those complex things that, you know, you really challenge your brain to think about all those little things that you didn't think maybe you would have to do as a Cairo, but there's a lot of that um, happening at this clinic. Very cool. Thanks, Lauren. We do have a couple more questions from our um, audience. So the first one um, says, does getting the master's in sports medicine along with the DC program help when wanting to work as a sports team chiropractor, or can you become a team chiropractor without the MS degree in sports med? So I'm looking at you guys who finished that uh, master's. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I would say, I mean, I had mine and I work as a team chiropractor, but my boss who's been working with the Portland Timbers for seven or eight years now, he, he doesn't have his master's degree, but he does have what's called his CCSP, his certified chiropractic sports physician. I think if you're not going to do the master's, you need, so, you need to do something that gives you that, you know, it covers that gap of knowledge between just the chiropractic stuff and the sports medicine stuff, because there's a lot that there's, there's a lot extra that you would want to learn before you would do that, I would say. I can add to, um, to that, but in Canada, it's a little bit different, I think. Um, so in Canada, if you're working, if you want to work with a professional team, you need your fellowship, which is a four-year program that you need to do. So even if you have your master's degree, you're probably not going to get in. But having a master's degree will really help with the fellowship and also will open up a lot more opportunities. But uh, you need the, um, it's called FRCCSS, which is a fellow of Royal College of Chiropractic Sports Sciences. So that's what you need. Very cool. Thank you guys. And just to note, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but our master's degree in sports medicine tends to be our most popular concurrent master's degree because a third of the credits double count for both your master's and your doctor of chiropractic degree. So a lot of our students are like, well, I'm already a third of a way to this awesome degree. So why not add it and finish those other two thirds? So that kind of tends to be pretty popular. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but thank you so much for touching on that. Um, this next question says, for those who are current practicing DCs, um, are there opportunities to participate or head research independently after graduation? Do you feel that UWS set you up for success in navigating and working with the larger medical community? Great question. So UWS uh, sets you up in a way where you are more of an integrative part of a, of a team. I never, gra I graduated and I never thought, okay, that's it. I am done. I am just going to do my thing. I, we, it sets you up in a way where it values of the other professions around you. I work very closely with uh, PTs, with physical therapists. I, I know lawyers. I know uh, even neurologists and neurosurgeons. It, just in case we need to go that particular route. UWS gives you, gives you a whole wide view of how, chiro uh, how chiropractic care is going into uh, general health care. We are no longer, uh, you, you could say, like an outlier. We are part of, the, of a whole team. And the UWS really, really puts an emphasis on, on that uh, with the education they give you. You're not just adjusting people, you're learning about nutrition, you're learning about rehabilitative exercises. You are, you're, you're kind of pitching here and there. So yeah, it's, it's, it definitely helps out all of that. Well, and I will say, I haven't participated myself in a lot of research, but I know uh, one of my colleagues, Karina Stab, she used to be adjunct faculty at the school and she just uh, took a position up at the University of Washington uh, doing research. So that's pretty, that's one of some really cool opportunities that I've heard. And then I know that uh, with Dr. Anthony Lisi at Yale, there are some opportunities for research that one of my other colleagues that is a UWS graduate has participated in as well. So there's definitely opportunities for that. And I think that the um, residencies at the VA have helped that a lot too. Um, Thank you. Part of research, I can add something to it. So uh, I'm currently uh, doing research. I'm doing a qualitative analysis to uh, uh, create sports agenda for sports chiropractors in the world, actually. So it is through the uh, uh, Royal College uh, in Canada, uh, but I think what Jamie, or sorry, not Jamie, how, how did you pronounce your name? Um, it's, it's, it's a Jaime. 
Jaime. Yeah. <laughs> How Jaime was saying is um, I think UWS gives you a good foundation. And um, after that, what you want to do is you want to build on that. And it's, it's a never ending story. It's, uh, it's a great foundation. It's, I think, I mean, obviously I'm biased. I went there. It's one of the best schools in my opinion. But if you want to do research, if you want to do, go into sports medicine more, you got to keep working hard. It's, it just doesn't, it's, it doesn't end when you get your DC degree. I mean, sometimes it does, and that's what you want to do. You want to do general practice, and that's awesome. You have a lot of good chiropractors around, right? But if you want to do a little bit more, then you need to, um, you know, work a little bit harder, I guess. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Fabulous question. Um, our next question is, how was the adjustment as a student beginning the sports med program while enrolled in the DC program? What did that look like, kind of tackling both right at the start? <laughs> I can talk about that right now um, because I'm in both right now. Um, so in Q6, I believe you start adding in those sports medicine classes. There's about two additional classes on top of the chiropractic program. The chiropractic program, as I'm sure you've looked at the schedule, is quite intense. There's a lot of classes at once. Um, by the time you're in Q6, though, you're pretty adapted to that. You kind of know your study habits. You know how to do that. So adding the two extra classes, um, it is more work but it's not impossible and it's pretty um, integrated and a lot of the classes actually line up and are very similar to some of the DC classes so you're learning you know maybe an upper extremity class um, in the rehab program or in the sports medicine program but you're also in you know upper extremity assessment in the DC program so you're kind of they kind of uh, work together and there's a lot of similarities um, and then in Q9, where I am right now, you start a practicum. So we have a three hour practicum a week where we're out in this, um, working with a high school teams and kind of working with um, a DC and an athletic trainer there. And then we have one other class uh, with that. So it adds about, you know, a typical two to three hours of extra work per class um, a week to your schedule. Lauren, are the majority of those MS classes online? Yes, they are online, sorry. Um, there are occasional like labs, like I'm actually at today um, at school because we have a lab class that we're doing today. Um, but the majority of them are online, um, kind of on your own time to do. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, we have a handful of more questions and I want to make sure we get through them before we introduce our next speaker. The next one is, are, chi are chiropractors qualified to treat eating disorders? Can anybody speak to that? I mean, I can start with that. I have no idea. So that's not my expertise. <laughs> it, okay. If someone comes in here, I would say, go, go see your GP. But that's how I practice. My focus is sports medicine, MSK health. And okay. anything out of my knowledge is I just say, I don't know. So. Great. I see that Dr. Moreau's hand is raised. Do you want to speak to that, Dr. Moreau? Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, it depends on the eating disorder. Most eating, uh, my specialty is sports medicine. I'm a diplomate of the American Chiropractic Board of Sports uh, uh, Physicians and currently the president of the American Chiropractic Board of Sports Physicians. Eating disorders, you know, are on a broad spectrum. Some eating disorders, <clears throat> it depends on the severity, uh, may be managed uh, through a chiropractic physician who is trained and educated to deal with those types of things. More serious eating disorders require a multiple disciplinary approach for success to the patient. That means that it takes more than just the doctor of chiropractic. It involves a primary care physician, more likely than not psychology support, as well as dietitians. We have uh, additional master's programs available in psychology and functional nutrition, as well as sports medicine, if that's an area of special interest. So a long answer to a short question. Eating disorders are on a spectrum. It depends on the disorder in regards to how that condition is managed. Thank you for allowing me to interrupt and I'll sign back off. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Moreau. We have three more questions. And I want to finish these three before we um, actually go to Dr. Moreau's presentation. Spoiler alert, he'll be our next speaker. <laughs> um, but this next question says, if I want to treat elite ballet dancers who are children, what additional program should I take as part of my DC program? 
I would think our sports medicine might be able to help some of that, um, but that's going to be working specifically with athletes. I mean, ballerinas are certainly athletes, very uh, finesse um, athletes. Anybody else have any other kind of thoughts about that? You may want to take some additional education in, you know, surrounding the pediatric population, just so you can understand child development. Um, but that would really be the only thing that the other thing that I would recommend with that. I don't know of any specific courses that surround that, but I'm sure that some exist. You might want to get, I, I would assume that you would probably want to get really familiar with extremity adjusting, especially with ankles, right? If, if they're turning into like point ballet, that might be something that you'll want to treat as a chiropractor. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, I, I was just saying with any sport, you really want to go and learn about that sport and just know the mechanisms, mm -hmm. injuries and whatnot. So I think if, because um, you, with sports medicine, you learn everything really. I mean, the toe problem with different, you know, it's the same thing. It just might be a different type of sports, but the big thing is go and observe um, that sport and learn the mechanism of injuries, the most common type of, you know, injuries. So your brain is always working and, you know, you, you can kind of rule out your red flags and, and one out based on that sport. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, this next question is for our panelists in Canada. So, so glad you're here. How was the adjustment in terms of academics and general life going from a school in Canada to a school in the U.S.? Um, so what do you mean by that? I mean, is that just the way you study or is it just going back and doing board exams? And I mean, I can talk about all of them, it's, but um, Studying is a little different, you know, when you go to chiropractic uh, school is you got to study every single day. You can't, it can't just be like, you know, going to SFU and cramping up last second. There's, you know, 10 finals in the last like five days. So, uh, but going back and you, do, you can do your board exams with uh, Western States, our um, passing rate is very high and um, just you'll be successful. I mean, with Western States, you can be a good, successful chiropractor. I uh, there's a lot of uh, opportunities that opens up, especially recently. I was selected as a clinical instructor at the Faculty of Medicine at UBC. So I actually now teach family doctors sports medicine and MSK health, which is pretty good for our profession, I think. But um, I'm the first one there, but you know, there's gonna be 900 after me, which is great. So you got good school, you'll, you'll have a great life. I enjoy my life, I travel all the time. <laughs> I buy good things. <laughs> so it's, uh, uh, you'll be good, you'll be set. Thank you. And just for the sake of time, I know we have other um, folks from Canada on our panel, but just for the sake of time, I'm going to leave it just there. And then the, our last question that we can answer at this time is specifically for Dr. Medina. Um, he, oh. This student would like to know, can you please tell us a little bit more about your experience working with farm workers and what kind of set you up for that, for that experience? So uh, the great majority of the farm workers that I worked with were Hispanic. And if you know anything about that particular community is that there is a lot of miscommunication uh, with language. I myself am fully bilingual in English and Spanish. So I kind of helped bridge that gap. But there were a lot of farm workers where there was a lot of, um, if you know anything about that, it's a lot of very heavy labor. So it, it came in with a lot of lower back pain, neck, all that kind of stuff. But I think the, the community that I worked with was very grateful to be able to be treated in their own language. So the, there is no gap between uh, me taking a full history and, and, and missing pieces that are vital to their particular care. So if you work in any underserved community or anything, um, one of the best things I could advise is make sure that you speak the language and kind of understand the lifestyle because it will go a very, very long way with uh, their overall care. If, if a person feels understood, then they, they will be more compliant with the care that you give them and they will overall get better and, and, and you, will, you will see it. So uh, that's the big challenge with, the, uh, with that particular uh, community, just the, uh, the language gap. Thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you for that question. That's a fantastic question. Um, thank you so much to all of you who are on our panel. Just for the sake of time, we have to move on um, so that we don't hold all of our attendees here for too long. Um, but we appreciate all your fantastic questions to our attendees and our great panel. We really appreciate you being here. Um, our next speaker is going to be Dr. Bill Moreau, who will be speaking about chiropractic at the Olympics. So as the leader of medical services at the United States Olympic Committee, Dr. Moreau worked with Olympic and Paralympic teams where he was responsible for the care of thousands 
thousands of Team USA athletes. During his tenure at the Olympic Committee, Dr. Moreau served as the Team USA Chief Medical Officer during the Rio 2016 Summer Olympics, the Penyongchang 2018 Winter Olympics, as well as serving as Medical Director for the London 2012 Summer Olympics and the Sochi 2014 Winter Olympic Games. So without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Moreau. Well, thank you so much for your very kind introduction. And thank you also to all the people who are taking the time to learn more about the chiropractic profession. I wanna give a special call out to all the panelists for their direct and honest answers to the questions, and especially to my own intern, Lauren. Uh, Lauren exemplifies what I look for in a chiropractic student, bright, inquisitive, seeking to help the patient first before her own interests. So, uh, if you're a person like Lauren, I would like to invite you to come to UWS so maybe we could work together to help people. She's an amazing human being, and I'm so thankful for that opportunity. Before I start my presentation, a couple things about research. I love that you asked the question. I actually publish with my interns. Uh, <clears throat> We uh, write case studies. We compete for research awards around sports medicine, specifically from the American Chiropractic Board of Sports Physicians. We publish uh, materials from uh, journal type of things for associations to peer reviewed research. I myself have about 60 published works and about um, 600 invited lectures. Yes, the opportunity for research is there. Uh, we're really excited about that. Also, big props to Jaime uh, about recognizing the importance of diversity, which you're going to hear in a moment. The cool thing about uh, Portland is regardless of who you are, what you look like, how you talk, your native language, there's somebody here like you. And so I'm very proud that we have uh, interpretive services available in our clinic. So regardless of what the native language is of the person, we're able to communicate with them because it's so important. And whoever asked that question, props for you to understand the importance of and value of diversity. One of my friends will be talking about that in a moment. My job is to talk to you a little bit about uh, chiropractic and sports medicine. I was in private practice in the Midwest in Iowa for 30 years. And then I led medicine for the United States Olympic Committee for a decade. Uh, been to five Olympic Games as a treating provider. I have friends all over the world uh, that work in sports medicine from all walks of life. I think that regardless of what your interest is, it's amazing to be able to provide care to all people. And in fact, I consider everybody an athlete. One of the patients that Lauren helps me with, she's 82 years old, and we work with her on building endurance and strength through walking activities. So whether you're working on an Olympic gold medalist or working on somebody to be able to help them achieve whole life health, such as being able to walk down a flight of stairs to the laundry room, all of those things are amazingly fulfilling. So this is me. I'm currently the chief medical officer, which means that I direct clinical care for the University of Western States. I'm really proud of my colleagues that I work with. The interns uh, are just simply amazing. They give me more than I give them because they come to work every day inspired and inquisitive and trying to do the best they can. Uh, also, uh, the first well, the only chiropractor in the world that's been a chief medical officer for a national organizing committee. I did that with Team USA twice, as well as a medical director for other Olympic Games. I'm a professor at the University of Western States, as well as another chiropractic university, a former consultant with the National Football League on international think tank around concussion research. Uh, adjunct faculty at Colorado School of Medicine, and then my diplomate and fellowship with the American College of Sports Medicine. This is a little uh, image from Rio de Janeiro, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Sidious Altius Fortius, that's the Olympic motto. Faster, higher, stronger. I think that this clearly crosswalks to us as individuals. We should all be trying to 
be the best that we can be and to try and explore what our skills are. So often we don't even know what we're capable of doing until we maybe get a little uncomfortable to explore what could be done. This is, I have permission to show you this slide from the patient. Uh, this is one of the patients we see in our clinic. Uh, she is the most decorated Team USA fencer in history. Uh, she's been to five Olympic games. She lives in a community in the Portland area. She's also a mom. Uh, she's also a business person, but she is an amazing individual and having the opportunity to work with a diversity of patients from all walks of life is such an enriching uh, experience. I am so excited for you. When I look at my ship in the harbor, I can see where I'm going to pull in. But for you that are just starting this journey, I have to admit I'm a little bit envious because you are going to have so many adventures and experiences with the different people that you'll intersect with. You know, to prevent burnout in sports or in healthcare, it's the psychosocial engagement with the patient that'll keep you fresh. Working with people like this, it makes it pretty easy to be interested. So after a decade of leading sports medicine for the largest Olympic committee in the world, I, I was really interested in what's different about an Olympic or Paralympic athlete and what can we do to provide help? While I led uh, healthcare for the United States Olympic Committee, we decreased the utilization of pharmaceuticals by 90%. And it isn't because I'm anti-pharma, because I'm not. It's because... Healthcare providers, when we work together, we can really move a mountain. And uh, the motto for our sports medicine at the United States Olympic Committee was we provide the edge. But when people work together as a team focused on the patient's needs, we do move mountains. The University of Western States motto is the patient first. And we honor that motto. But what we need to do in order to best put the patient first is the first thing is you have to make sure that you have those skill sets so that you can arrive at a correct assessment or diagnosis of why this person presents to you. And then you need to be able to implement the care patterns most effective and most useful for that individual patient. It, it's never one size fits all. They're all different people and they all have different things about them in their past history or exam that make them unique. The difference between winning and just competing in elite sport is really small. And so it is in patient care also. Being able to be a differentiator for a person, a patient who presents to you, is one of the most rewarding things you'll ever do. You know, in life, there's many ways that you can seek rewards. Uh, it's easy to say finances. Yes, um, you'll do well as a doctor of chiropractic. Uh, that's true the finances. But to be honest with you, I think the real value is when you can help somebody and they look you in the face and say, doctor, thank you. Thank you for helping me get better. Uh, what's the dollar value of that? It's huge. So just like the athlete, we need to practice both our skills and also from my perspective, the coolest thing about being a, being a doctor of chiropractic, and there's a lot, is that it's a never-ending journey of learning and becoming a lifetime learner. It's never over unless you decide it's over. Every day, I learn things that I think are amazing and interesting that help me to help people. And so that's pretty cool. Another thing that's really cool is what an honor it is to be able to relieve another person's pain with nothing more than your head and your hands. Don't you think that's cool? I sure do. And just to be able to think, and I'm especially proud of working with my interns like Lauren and her teammates. And for me, I, I'm a joyful person. I love going to work and I love coming home because when I'm on my way to work, I'm thinking what types of puzzles will my team and I solve today? And on the way home, I think about the people 
that we touched that day and how we provided it sometimes just information as well as care to help them just simply have a better life. Don't you think that's honorable? I do. So in sport, when you think about high performance, and it is an amazing world, I'll tell you, uh, what does it take to be the best in the world? Well, if you're an Olympian or a Paralympian, it, it's incredible. They practice twice a day, every day, every Saturday, most Sundays. And uh, to become the best in the world at a specific time against the best the world has to offer, man, that's something. For you, you have a lifetime of opportunity. An Olympian or Paralympian has a specific clock hour. On this date, you're going to go to the starting line. Good luck. Well, the good news for you is that you get to have a long race, a race to become the best you can be. Each and every one of you has unique abilities, skills, gifts, and some of them you don't even know. Only by exploring those will you actually be able to become the best version of yourself. This is a famous photo at the uh, United States Olympic Committee. It doesn't even involve uh, US athletes. It's actually a Norwegian and a Finnish cross-country skier. These two athletes skied 75 miles. The difference between gold and silver was one second. After 75 miles of competition, we say it's the difference between eating from a cereal box and being on one in reference to the Wheaties thing, right? How about this photo? High performance. What's it take to be the best in the world? On viewers left, that's Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps took the gold from the Croatian swimmer seen on the viewer's right. The delta or the difference is one one hundredth of a second between gold and silver. Well, Michael Phelps is the guy that won that. Uh, sports medicine may have helped him a bit, but to be honest with you, we would never claim anything from his athletic performance. You just don't do that. The difference here is, I think, really unique and amazing. I had to ask a, a, a very experienced and pretty famous exercise physiologist. I don't even know what a tenth of a second means to a human and human movement and human performance. And I clearly wouldn't know what a hundredth of a second means. Well, I said, how can I relate to that? And he said to me, he said, well, Dr. Morrow, if you blink your eye, in a tenth of a second, your eyelid moves a quarter of the way. And so when Phelps wins by a hundredth of a second, the, it's infinitesimally small, the difference between being a champion and a competitor. So how does this apply to you? Well, at UWS, we're going to provide you with the tools and encouragement for you to become the best version of your clinical self. You're not going to compete with your teammates. You're just simply going to compete with your future you. How can you gain the skill sets to become the best you can be? Because we're all individuals and we're all different. But what we want to do is help you stock your toolbox for the future with those types of things that help you to become a champion in your own life. And so this is how I view you right now. You're getting ready to start this amazing voyage through healthcare and chiropractic, hopefully at UWS, I'd like to see you. But before you can summit that mountain, first you have to cross the snowfield. Then you have to work your way through the trees. Then you have to get up through the first ledge. In other words, you don't just instantly transport yourself from where you are today to the top of the mountain. You have to have a plan. How do you get there? And how do you know if you're still on the right pathway to success? Because in life, you're not competing against the physical therapist down the street, the family practice doctor, the chiropractor that's in the same town. That isn't really what's happening here. When I look at this slide, and I love this slide, it's a 100-meter sprint at the Olympic Games, which um, I'm not very good at, but I sure do appreciate it. But when you look at this slide, I think about it and I really enjoy it because what this represents to me is me competing against myself from yesterday. I really don't compete 
against other people. I only compete about who was I yesterday and how can I be a better person today? I talk to my interns like Lauren and I say every day you have to work on three things. One is you have to work on your technical skills as a doctor. Two, you have to work on the professional and personal relationships in your life. And then three is, is really kind of interesting to me is that you need to work on yourself. And I think that perhaps number three might be very important to the other two. So in life, you don't compete with people down the street. You just compete with yourself. And if you can become a better person every day, well, then you'll be a champion. Because in life, you will hit hurdles. Hurdles are uh, useful tools. That's what makes us enriched as we live through life. Some hurdles you'll pass over and have that personal satisfaction of just simply thinking, yeah, I did it. Completing a professional degree as a doctor of chiropractic, that'll be a hurdle, but you can achieve success by planning, hard work, and diligence. Sometimes when you hit the hurdle, you might not clear it on the first time. But that also can be seen as a wonderful opportunity for you just to simply learn. How, what did I do? Why didn't it work? And how can I do better so I have a different outcome the next time? So what can we learn from Olympians and Paralympians? Well, we can learn how to become the best version of ourselves. And so I would leave you with a couple thoughts. One is develop your game plan for becoming a champion. Hopefully, part of that includes becoming a graduate of the University of Western States. Number two, recognize and embrace that the only person you can control is you. You can't make people do anything, but what you can do is make yourself do something. The third thing I think you need to start thinking about if you don't already have it is developing your personal mission statement. Who are you? Who do you wanna become? I've changed what I used to ask my grandsons. I used to say, what do you want to be when you grow up? I don't say that anymore. Now I ask them, what kind of a person do you want to be when you grow up? I think that's more important. Think about where it is that you want to go and then build a plan to get there. And in fact, I think you should cut a picture out of what something that represents where you want to go and put it on your mirror. So every day you see that and it helps to visually reinforce where you want to go. Also, keep balance in your life. You know, it's pretty easy as a student in a, all, in a rigorous program to kind of get out of sync. You still have to keep balance by working on the three things that we talked about, your clinical self, your personal self, and those people around you. The journey is much more fun if when you get to the finish line, you have, the, you have your family and pe your friends when you finish to help you celebrate. Balance is important. And expect challenges and learn from both your victories, as well as the challenges that allow you to do better the next time. So come join us at the University of Western States and be the best version of yourself. I am honored to have a chance to talk to you today. And I hope that maybe one day we'll have that opportunity to say hello to one another. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Moreau. Um, we appreciate you being here. There's one quick question for you before we move on um, with our next speaker would be, um, he wants to know, um, I would like to start treating college or professional athletes in the near future. Would obtaining a master's of athletic training do me justice or is a master of sports med preferred to be able to work with high level athletes? Well, I think that the key thing is, is that you've identified there needs to be, there's even more. In order to work with elite sport, you have to have the credentials to open the door, right? And sometimes it's your network that can get you into the sport, but it's what you know that keeps you at that level. So um, a master's in athletic training, I have a great degree, a degree of respect for certified athletic trainers. They do an awful lot. But once I, I, I think there's a difference between what the certified athletic trainer does and uh, the chiropractic physician does. Uh, a lot of it uh, is complementary, but yet still can be different. And I'm not just talking about manipulative medicine. So I think that you have to sort of look in your map 
where is it specifically that you want to go and try and be as specific as possible about what it is that you see yourself doing and then craft that mission plan to help you get there. So, you know, in elite sport, uh, for most people, the role is very narrowed because, for instance, the average Olympian has nine people involved in their healthcare, all different healthcare providers. And so sometimes your role is very narrow. And so if that's your role, then be the best you can be. If your role is to be the chiropractor, well, then be the best one they've ever seen. If you're at lower levels, well, then you might have even a broader spectrum and you need to make sure you have the skill sets. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Dr. Moreau. Um, all right, before we move on, we do have one more set of questions for everybody. So if you take a look at your screen, we're gonna pull up a couple more questions for you, kind of get to know each other, just another second. Um, take a second just to answer these. All right, I'll give you guys just a few more seconds to answer those two poll questions. And we'll take a look at those answers. All right, let's go ahead and close that. And here's your answers. Oh, I love that the whole person approach tends to be the most popular patient-centered approach, world-class facility. Yeah, awesome. It sounds like a lot of you are very interested in the MS and sports med. That tends to be our most popular for chiropractor students. I will talk about the other ones um, in a little bit, actually, about the other programs. So thank you again, Dr. Moreau, and thank you all for um, answering those poll questions. Um, we're now going to have the privilege to hear from Bola Maje Kobaje, our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at UWS. She will be speaking about some of our DEI initiatives on campus and what we're doing to make UWS an inclusive space for all. Bola has more than 10 years of experience leading diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts at universities throughout the Pacific Northwest. So welcome, Bola. We're so excited to have you. Thank you. And um, just as uh, I think Stephen's helping me to share my screen or share a screen, I just want to welcome each of you um, to this presentation today. And I don't know about you, but I am ready to become a chiropractor. I, I'm just really inspired by the, what the alumni had to say and by what Dr. Moreau had to say. I, I don't think I came to this presentation today, um, you know, prepared to be so inspired. And, and so thank you to all the presenters who, um, who have spoken today. Um, yes, Regan, thanks so much for that introduction. My name is Bola Majakobaja. I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion um, at University of Western States. And again, just want to thank folks for taking the time today. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, I was really pleased to hear how many folks um, asked about um, questions about diversity and equity today, you know, whether it be um, serving the farm working community um, or, um, you know, um, having my, more diversity with, um, within uh, the chiropractic profession around gender. Um, and um, uh, Dr. Moreau uh, pointing out um, people with uh, different abilities. Um, so, so, you know, that's really in line with what I'm seeing. A lot of students have this expectation of um, both their university caring about diversity, equity, and inclusion, but also um, want to be able to serve folks who, um, who haven't accessed um, chiropractic care or who don't have the same access to healthcare as, as, as the rest of us. And so, so really just excited and happy to be in this conversation today. Um, but wanted to talk really quickly about why diversity equity is important to University of Western States. And I think it starts with, you know, um, this sense of belonging and, and inclusion. Um, as a student, we want you um, to have the confidence um, to know that you're coming to an institution that values DEI um, and knows that um, you have an expectation of learning and growing as a professional in a place that affirms who you are, your background, um, your social identities, and your experiences. DEI is important because, um, and Dr. Moreau really referred to this, um, we want students to be confident and prepared to provide culturally responsive care. So what is culturally responsive care? It's this idea that, you know, we know about the health disparities um, and the uh, inequities that exist in this world and connect 
certain populations of people. But at the same time, we have the professionalism and the expertise to treat each patient um, as the individual that they are, um, and that we have a lifetime commitment to building our own awareness around different cultures and different folks. And, um, and, and I hope that's what you'll find when you come to UWS. Um, the third important why is, um, and I think panelists have um, said this already, including Dr. Medina, um, that we have an opportunity to expand the reach of chiropractic. Um, uh, whether it be um, immigrants, uh, First Nation folks, Black, Pacific Islander, you know, there are communities who haven't had the same access and who have even been excluded from um, quality health care. And we have an opportunity to really expand that through um, graduating um, professionals who are prepared, as well as serving local folks in our, in our clinic. If we go to the next slide, just wanted to talk really quickly about what you can expect. Um, so uh, you can expect that DEI will be reflected in our institutional priorities and values. Um, that, um, as Dr. Murrow said, we have a learning posture here at UWS, this idea that we're all on a journey towards cultural competence. Um, and um, that we know that it takes a lifetime to learn about all the different cultures, uh, you know, social identities of um, the world and of society, and that um, things change and that we have to adapt in, with those changes. Um, you can expect to learn and work with faculty and students from a, diver a diversity of backgrounds and experiences, and um, that especially with um, some upcoming changes, that there will be um, a strong thread of DEI in both courses and curriculum. If we go to the next slide, you can also expect experiential learning opportunities. I think you've heard about them today, um, both through off-campus events, clinical experiences, um, practical experiences where you do get to work with a variety of folks with a, a variety of different needs. There are professional development opportunities on campus, leadership opportunities. There's a couple of clubs that focus on specifically on diversity and equity and some of our students attend um, confident conferences focused on DEI. There's opportunities to get involved and you will find a supportive community from both staff, faculty, and your peers. If we go to the next slide, I know that some of you um, may be um, um, more or less familiar with um, uh, the Portland area and, and really um, where UWS is located. Um, and, and so I thought just to end today's presentation, I would just do a land acknowledgement just as we kind of reflect on the original folks of uh, this area. So University of Western States is located in Portland, Oregon in Multnomah County. We respectfully acknowledge and honor the indigenous people whose traditional and ancestral homes we stand on. The Multnomah, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Tumwater, Wallala Bands of the Chinook, the Tualatin, Kalapuya, and many other indigenous nations of the Columbia River. Despite that, Despite attempts of removal and erasure, tribal nations, communities, groups, and individuals remain a strong and vital part of this region. UWS recognizes that this acknowledgement is a small step in affirming the ongoing presence and contributions of Native communities. We commit to engaging with these communities by expanding access to the university, supporting current students and employees, building partnerships with local tribes and organizations, and increasing access to quality care. Um, so if we go to the next slide, just to end, um, thank you so much for your time again, and um, just as a take home message, um, you know that, um, uh, you know, again, DEI is an ongoing journey, the institution um, has made some strides, and we all are also committed to making strides in the future to make um, UWS an inclusive place to learn, teach, and work. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Bola. Um, we really appreciate your presentation and um, for shedding some light on our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts at UWS, and of course, acknowledging our indigenous people of this area. So, so important. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions for Bola before we move on? Okay, awesome. Thanks again so much for being here. Oh, we do have one really quickly. Um, it says, as a member of the LGBTQ community, what is it like being on campus? Are there clubs and is the community supportive of people like me? 
super fantastic question. Um, thank you so much for that question. Um, I identify as an ally, and so I can't speak to the specific um, experience of LGBTQ folks on our campus. I do know a number of students um, and staff and faculty who identify as LGBTQ, and and as, as I mentioned, I, you know, I think um, students I have talked to have both found support and room for growth. And so, just being transparent about that, that you know, we're again institutionally, we're all on this journey. Um, there has been a club in the past um, focused on the LGBTQ community, but I know that one of the leaders told me in the last two months that that club was. Um, not um, active at this time. And if anybody has different information, um, please just chime in. Um, so there's excitingly a leadership opportunity. So if you're interested in um, you know, club leadership, there, there definitely is, is room there. Um, and then uh, I think really exciting in, um, we had some, and you can find this on YouTube. Um, we have um, a number of faculty and alumni who recently did an LGBTQ um, a plus panel that really talked about the experience of um, folks who identify with these communities um, and their experiences both from an educational standpoint and um, as a practicing chiropractor. So I think um, I think that that was really valuable in terms of the broader community's education, but also um, uh, can provide some both professional and personal advice um, to folks who belong to the LGBTQ community. And then just finally, I will say, um, and I'm not sure if the person who asked this question is from Portland or not, um, but um, uh, you know, I have been involved um, with a number of LGBTQ plus groups um, in the Portland, Vancouver area. And so while you may not find a large community at UWS, in the Portland surrounding area, in the Vancouver surrounding area, there are, um, I, I, I feel pretty good about uh, saying that you will find a community, you will um, find um, uh, this area to be much more affirming, I think, than other regions of this country, um, and uh, that there are just a number of resources and organizations that you can get involved with, and of course, leadership opportunities on campus. So, um, and I'm more than um, interested and happy to connect any new students um, to both um, to, to local resources and to people. I have a, a lot of folks in my network that are very interested in just supporting the growth of um, new professionals in this area. So sorry that was a longer answer than I thought it would be. <laughs> thank you, Bola. So important. And thank you for asking that question. We really, we really value all of our students here and we appreciate it. All right. Um, now, before we kind of wrap up, I am going to give our final presentation. So I am Brigan Arnett. I am one of our admissions advisors for the DC program here at UWS. So for the next few minutes, I'm going to sh share some information with you about our admissions process and the requirements um, that we're looking for to enter the Doctor of Chiropractic program. So if you give just one second here to open up the screen. All righty, so that looks great. Again, welcome and thanks again for coming. We'll go ahead and start that next slide. Um, this second slide is just a little overview about UWS, kind of what's been going on in the last over 100 years <laughs> since we were established um, in 1904. We were established as the oldest chiropractic college in the world. Um, and then you can kind of read on some of those um, timeline here. Um, I'm going to fast forward all the way to 2020. Last year, we um, moved to a brand new, beautiful state of the art, art clinic and campus. It's absolutely beautiful. And then looking ahead in 2023, we will be launching a brand new Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine program. It will start in spring 23, so April, um, and there will be much more um, information forthcoming at the beginning of 2022. So if you are interested in becoming a naturopathic physician, um, keep your ears open because there's going to be lots of information forthcoming about that. So let's go ahead and move on to our next slide. Um, you've heard a lot about why we should choose UWS. Um, you've heard from a lot of great speakers today, but like I mentioned, we are the second oldest chiropractor in the world. We have a fantastic reputation for putting out world-class physicians who do practice worldwide. I mean, you've heard people today from the U.S. and Canada, but we do have people um, working outside of um, North America as well, all over the country. We're located in beautiful Portland, Oregon, lots of activities. If you'd love to be outside, this is the place to be. Within an hour and a half to two hours, you can do some fabulous skiing. You can be at the beach. You can be just about anywhere within a couple hours drive 
of Portland. There's a lot of great things to do. Um, we have a very hands-on program. This is not a program where you're going to learn about chiropractic from a book, right? Um, where you're not going to be practicing in person. You absolutely will be practicing on people um, with, um, with fantastic faculty and with each other, which is really great. Um, we do have a handful of concurrent degree options. You've heard a lot about the master's in sports medicine. Um, the other probably second most popular for our chiropractor students is our master of science in human nutrition and functional medicine. Um, unlike the master in sports medicine that has um, about a third of the coursework double counts, if you will, for both DC and sports med, the natural, or excuse me, the um, HNFM program does not have any like double dip, if you will. It's a completely separate program, but it is completely online. And we do have some chiropractic physicians who may also wanna be doing um, functional medicine in their practice or teaching nutrition on a really deep level after taking that master's degree. So we offer that. And then we anticipate that our doctor of naturopathic medicine will be um, very popular. Um, it technically won't be a concurrent degree. You will need to finish your DC first before starting the ND, but the first year of the schooling is going to be about the same for ND and DC. So you basically would shave off a, a year if that's something you wanted to do is to do two doctoral degrees and be very busy. <laughs> we have an integrated approach to healthcare and evidence performed education. So that's something that we really value ourselves on and why we think you should choose to come to UWS. So let's talk a little bit about um, requirements on the next slide. So prerequisite overview, we are requiring that you have at least three years of college under your belt, which is 90 semester credits or 135 quarter credits, depending on where you are in the US or Canada. Some schools are quarters, some are semesters. So that's why there's two different numbers there. But three years of college is 90 semester credits or 135 quarter credits. Of those 90 credits, you need to have at least a 3.0. Um, of those 90 credits, you need to have 24 credits in the sciences and half of that, so 12 credits, need to have a lab. And the way we calculate lab is let's say you take a three credit biology lecture with a one credit biology lab. All four of those credits are going to count for lab. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to take 12 lab credits. It's a bit, uh, bit easier to get to it if you're counting it with both the lecture and the lab all as one, which we do, which is kind of nice. So let's look at the next slide and take a look at um, kind of our basic science requirements. The hard requirement is at least 100 level courses, at least one semester or one quarter of each course, okay? But what we recommend is to kind of branch on past that entry level 100 class and really take a dive into 200 level classes or above. We'd love to see a full year sequence. So if you're taking Chem 101, take Chem 102 too, you know, take a whole year if you can. It's really gonna help prepare you for the coursework. We do prefer to see science major coursework or um, like pre-med, pre-health track professional courses. Those are going to dive way deeper than a class that's um, not intended for a science major, if that makes sense. But again, the basic requirement is at least one class of 100 level in the sciences. So let's take a look at those hard requirements that's going to be on our next slide. If you're looking at coming for winter 22, which starts in January, so like just a few, a couple months from now, we require four very specific classes, organic or biochemistry, general chemistry, biology, and physics. Um, biology, I have a couple um, Dots there, we can use a nat and phys, zoology, microbio, all of those can count for your biology requirement. And then physics, if you haven't taken physics specifically, but you have taken kinesiology, exercise, phys, or biomechanics, we can use those too, okay? Now, if you're starting for fall 22, we actually have a different requirement. Um, we're gonna be changing the requirements just a little bit starting next year. We're gonna be looking for three very specific classes, a nat and phys, one and two, and general chemistry. So we want you to have at least six semester or eight quarter credits of a nat and phys and at least three credits, so at least one class in general chemistry. Um, and of course, take a look there. Um, you're welcome to take human anatomy, human physiology separately. If that's the way your school offers it, that's fine, as long as you have those two courses and at least one in chemistry. Now, our next slide is going to talk a little bit about um, what we what we recommend. So although for fall 22, we only have a hard requirement of anatomy, phys, and um, chemistry, we highly, highly recommend you take the following courses, some sort of advanced chemistry class, some sort of physics and or kinesiology, and some sort of biology class. Um, these classes are going to set you up for success in our program and really help you um, as you navigate the doctoral level, graduate level coursework in our program, which is extremely rigorous, we want to make sure that you're well prepared. So we highly recommend taking, you know, not just the bare minimum, but kind of taking a little bit of everything when it comes to the sciences to be well prepared. So let's take a look at our next. Um, 
we are looking for a handful of humanities and social sciences. Now we don't have like a hard requirement. We just like to see a well-rounded applicant. So we love to see things like on your screen. So English, um, history, religion, music courses, things like this all count kind of for humanities. For fall 22, I mentioned that we're only gonna have those anat and phys one and two and chemistry hard requirements but the rest of the requirement does not change. You will still need three years of college. You will still need at least 24 credits in the sciences and 12 in with a lab. Okay, so just those hard classes are changing. Take a look at the next one. Um, so a couple of additional notes about UWS that kind of make us unique is you can earn your bachelor's degree with UWS after your fifth quarter in the DC program. This is really cool. So I mentioned you need three years of college under your belt. You don't necessarily have to have four years with your bachelor's degree to come to our program. You can, most of our students do, uh, but many of our students decide to finish three years and then come straight to chiropractor school to save some money and to save some time and to be able to come to um, school sooner without having to take that final fourth year of college. Um, essentially three years um, plus all those science plus that first year of chiropractor school um, satisfies the department, U.S. Department of Education requirements for a bachelor's degree in human biology. So it's really cool. Even if you did finish your bachelor's before coming, but you want to have a second bachelor's, you totally can. You can go ahead and apply um, and get a bachelor's degree in human biology with UWS after your fifth quarter. So that's going to be just a little uh, that's the second quarter into your second year would be your sixth quarter when it's awarded. We mentioned earlier, but we do have a handful of online master's degree programs, the most popular sports medicine, human nutrition, and functional medicine, and then our doctor of naturopathic program. That program will not be online. It will be an in-person, you know, clinical based um, program, just like the DC program, but we anticipate it being pretty popular. And then um, students can apply to our DC program before finishing the prereqs. I think that's really important to know. So if you are in a situation where um, you're close to your 90 credits, or maybe you have only one in that and fifth class, you don't have your second, but everything else looks good, go ahead and apply. You can apply with at least 70 semester credits. You can um, go ahead and send that in. And we can even give you what we call a conditional acceptance letter, which means you're accepted on the condition that you finish all your prerequisites and you meet all the requirements, which are always due six weeks before classes start. So let's talk a little bit about that admissions process. That's on my next slide. Um, to submit your application, you're going to need to submit transcripts from each institution you've attended. Um, so even if you took like one class at a community college, we're still going to need that in addition to, you know, your main four year transcript or three year, whatever you're doing. We require two essays. One is a personal statement kind of essay, you know, why UWS, why chiropractic. The second is about your extracurricular experiences and volunteer activities that you've participated in. We require two letters of recommendation, a resume. There's a $50 application processing fee. Now, once all that's in and everything looks awesome, we've reviewed your transcripts, you meet all the requirements. What we'll do is we'll set you up with an interview. Interviews are done on the phone or on Zoom, usually on Zoom. Um, anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to kind of get to know you better. And then if everything looks good, we'll admit you either a conditional or a full admit. At that point, there is a $300 tuition deposit that holds your seat. It will be subtracted or taken away from your first quarter tuition statement. So again, it's a deposit, not anything extra to hold your spot in that class. Um, yeah, I have a question that says, how far in advance can I apply? I'd like to apply for fall 23. Um, our fall applications always open a whole year in advance in August. So fall 23 will open in August 22. So the fall 23 isn't quite open yet, but fall 22 is open. All right, can we check out our next slide? Um, I would love for you to meet your advisor. Okay, so there are three of us on the advising team for the DC program. This is a great slide to take a picture of or a screenshot of or whatever. Um, Natasha French is our advisor for Canadian students and other international students. Um, she is a fantastic point of reference, especially um, if you're from Canada. She is so knowledgeable <laughs> about all things Canada, provincial aid, all those great things. Steven is our advisor who does um, all American students outside of Oregon. So if you live outside of Oregon, go ahead and take a picture of Stephen's contact info. And again, I'm Brian and I work with all of our students in the state of Oregon. Um, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I wonder if I wonder if I meet the requirements, how can I tell? Can I send my transcript? The answer is yes. Um, send your transcript to your advisor, whoever's on this screen, um, and we'd be happy to review that for you. You are welcome to send an unofficial copy. You don't have to send that official copy for the transcript review, the evaluation, but you do need to send an official transcript before you can start school, if that makes sense. But we can at least take a look and let you know kind of where you're sitting um, by sending us your transcript. I have a couple more questions, so let me go ahead and answer these. Um, are there specific classes? Classes that are not part of the DC program that you need to take to earn a bachelor's degree? Yes. Um, well, to earn a bachelor's degree in 
at UWS? If that's your question, the answer is no. Everything that's included in our DC program is what will count as the bachelor's degree with UWS. If you're talking about getting a bachelor's degree before coming, um, you're going to have to take whatever your college tells you to take to finish your bachelor's degree at your school. Just make sure that you have the 90 credits, 24 sciences, half of those with the lab and those specific science classes um, to be entered into DC program. And then, of course, whatever your school requires to get your bachelor's degree is what they'll need. If I didn't answer that, shoot me another message, but I think that's what you had asked. Um, this last one is, are there is there a required anat and phys course for the application period or next? Is there a required anat and phys course required? Um, the required anat and phys classes is for fall 22 and beyond. If you're applying for winter 22, we'd love to see a nat and phys, but it's more of a general biology. As long as you've had biology, microbiology, and nat and phys, all of those will count for biology, just the general blanket of biology. Starting in fall 22 and beyond, you must have a nat and phys, okay? So it's a little bit more specific. Hopefully that answers that. If that didn't answer it, go ahead and shoot me another message, okay? All right, yeah, let's talk about that next slide. We're almost done here, guys. <laughs> Financial aid, so important. Um, the financial aid application always opens the, on October 1st of the year before you start school. So if you are looking to start school in fall of 22, the application for FAFSA is already open. It opened about a month ago on October 1st. So I would recommend submitting your FAFSA as soon as possible. You can't submit it too soon. Well, I guess before October 1st would be too soon, but anytime after October 1st, submit that FAFSA. You don't wanna be waiting till the last moment. Um, if you wanna take a picture of this slide, this is a great one too. Um, this is our school code. Um, we have our school code listed here. And then we also have for provincial aid, if you are from Canada, the school code and program code for UWS, if you are applying for provincial aid. UWS does have a handful of scholarships. I have them listed right there. Each scholarship has different requirements, maybe an essay component or a GPA component or something like that. But you are welcome to go to our um, website, just go to uws.edu, type in scholarships, click on the link, and you can review what all of those scholarships entail. And then, of course, if you have questions about financial aid or scholarships, email the financial aid office. I have their email address right there at the bottom of your screen and their phone number if you want to take a picture of that to reach out with questions. This question is, is there a limit to the number of students allowed in each cohort? There is not a hard limit, but we usually try to cap the fall around 120, and we usually have a smaller class in the winter, um, just because fall is always bigger than winter anywhere you go <laughs> to school. Um, if there's 120 students who want to come and they're all qualified, we're not going to cut those last two students, okay? Uh, so don't, don't feel too, too worried. Um, if we have a couple extra people, we'd love to have you. Um, I was going to say, it's important to note that starting next year, or let me back up, um, our winter 22 term that starts in January will be the last starting winter term. Moving on, we will only have a fall and a spring start instead of a fall and winter. So that will start fall and, or excuse me, October and um, April. So if you're thinking about, oh, I might want to start in winter of 23, that will not exist anymore. It will be spring 23. So winter 22, last one for winter, then we'll have fall 22. And we will have spring 23, winter 23, spring 24, you get it. So um, we mainly do that to line up with other programs. Almost all of our other programs start fall and spring. In addition, so will our um, naturopathic program will start in fall and spring, no winter start. So we're trying to align our chiropractor program kind of with everybody else. So let's go ahead and talk really briefly about what UWS is doing um, with COVID-19. Obviously, this is, um, it's been going on in our country for 20 months. It's been, it's been, I think hard for everybody, but UWS, we are doing our very best to make sure that everybody feels comfortable on our campus. We are encouraging social distancing while on campus for upper quarter students. Our lectures in our labs, um, our, our lectures are online and labs are in small groups um, instead of massive groups, you know, to kind of limit the amount of people you're around. And then we of course have increased sanitation and daily cleanings around our campus to keep things top notch clean. I think there's one last slide about COVID before we wrap up. Um, I, we get these questions a lot, you know, my, my school is shut down, my school has not reopened, you know, how can I get my transcripts, how can I apply to school if, <laughs> if you know, if they're shut down, um, we will work with you. Um, we are understanding that um, the world is in a very different place than it was a few years ago, if your school is closed, or if you're having trouble processing um, your transcripts or anything like that, um, we will absolutely be understanding of that, okay? Alrighty, so, um, Thank you again so much for coming. I have one final little slide to just thank you all. Um, is there any last minute questions um, from our audience? I know we need to wrap up, we're a couple of minutes over.
Okay, perfect. So go ahead and type any last minute questions you have. If there's no questions, we're going to go ahead and share um, a campus video tour with all of you since we're obviously not um, physically on our campus today. Um, but my colleague Natasha and I are here to answer um, any last minute questions you guys have. Okay, okay, maybe we